through it, I can receive it. By it, I will achieve it. There will always be a place in my heart for my Bible. Amen. And while you're still standing in respect, out of respect for the reading of God's holy word, turn your attention to the book of Luke, the 15th chapter. And we will read Verse 14, 15, and 16. <clears throat> and when you have it, say amen. amen. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land. He began to be in want. And he went up and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat. And no man gave him anything. Amen. 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 And he would have fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat. And no man gave him anything. Amen. Amen. I want to talk from the subject, that's all I can stand. I can't stand no more. We are witnessing the intense experience of a young man who has come to the end of his rope. Every indication is that this young man is right in the throes of a crossroad. He's come to a crossroad. Crossroads. Crossroad is a space in time that is filled with two unknown decisions. They, uh, it's filled with the unspeakable challenge uh, to make up one's mind as to which way he should go. But going that way is unknown to him. He does not understand what is at either road. He does not know what lays before him in either way that he goes. But he realizes that he's at a crossroad and he must select one direction. He has to be in a perplexed situation because he has he has used up all of his resources 
and now comes to the pig pen. And he's sitting there and the scripture, our text says, watch this, that he would have fain eaten the very husks that the pigs did eat. He's in a very sad situation and he finds himself stuck at a crossroad. I wonder, I wonder how many of us, how many of us has ever been faced with a crossroad? How many of us have ever seen and been at the position where we have to make a choice, yeah. a decision yeah, yeah. based upon uh, limited knowledge, but really depending on our faith. How many of us have come to a most pivotal time in our lives where you've had to think long and hard about your, your next move, realizing that uh, uh, your next turn could be the wrong one, could be a devastating one. Could, could, could be a traumatic one. I wish I had somebody here that, that's ever in your life been faced with a crossroad, faced with having to make the decision and knowing that this decision uh, is a matter of life or death. I'm talking about a time when you come face to face uh, with uncertainty in your life. Uh, you know, it's just like when uh, you come face to face with uh, a man with a gun. You are looking down the barrel at a bullet with your name on it. And you can either fight or acquiesce to the man's whims and beg for mercy. I'm, I'm talking about a crossroad. I'm, I'm talking about a crossroad, that time when your, your daddy is standing over you with uh, a, an extension cord extended in the air, waiting to strike and inflict pain upon your body. And he asked the question, what in the world were you thinking of? And you have to come up with an answer quickly. You don't have time to think. Wait a minute, let me think. No, no, he wants to know what in the world were you thinking of? And your responsibility is to come up with an answer that can satisfy his curiosity and put an end to the swinging of the extension cord. I don't know about you, but I got beat with an extension cord. Yeah. Wasn't no, wasn't no, come on somebody. I know somebody else in here got, yeah, ain't no belt, ain't no hand, ain't no time out. Now we got time out stand in the corner, but if I got in the corner, I was trying to run from the extension cord. Uh, 
Jesus is in the midst of a discourse regarding lostness. The Bible declares that the Pharisees and scribes uh, were grumbling among themselves about Jesus. His penchant for uh, sitting down with sinners and publicans. He is sitting down with them, eating dinner with those who were considered to be less than, those who were considered to be degenerates and unwantables in their lives. And they're trying to figure out why Jesus has been sitting in the, in the homes of tax collectors and publicans. And Jesus hears this private conversation. He hears, hears them grumbling between themselves. And I think I'll stick a pen right there and say, if you think that your grumbles are not being heard, you you think that you can be a silent protester, I've got news for you. Uh, the, the one that you really need to worry about hearing you, he hears all that you have to say. He, he hears everything. Your, he hears all of your discontentment. He, he, he hears you and you sit there talking about your brother. He, he, he hears you when you sit there complaining about your leadership. He, he, he sits there, hears you when you are complaining about the course of your lives. He, he hears you. It, it, it doesn't make any difference how, how, how quiet you are. He, he hears you. Is that right? Yeah, he hears you. The Bible says he hears us uh, before we yet speak and knows uh, what we are asking for before we ask. Oh, I wish I had some Bible readers. Yeah. Jesus, he hears these people, the Pharisees and scribes, as they are murmuring and decides that he'd answer their questions uh, with parables. And so he speaks these parables. Parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Is that right? He speaks of a woman who has lost 10 pieces of silver and searches for it uh, ceaselessly until she has found it, demonstrating the value of the coins to the woman. Amen, amen. He, he, he tells a parable of the man that had a hundred sheep and one of them got lost and he decided to abandon, abandon, Abandon the 99 in the wilderness uh, and take out on a journey and search for the one. He's demonstrating the value of one individual relationship that he has uh, and that he values uh, with his sheep. Amen. It means that he, he values your, the relationship that he has with you, Ernest, and with you, and with you, and he's not concerned about the masses. He values one relationship. But then he comes, he comes to our parable. 
And he says, a certain man had two sons. And one of the sons came to him. The younger of the son came to him. And he said, Father, give me the portion that belongs to me. Uh, and the father, he, he did something that is quite curious because if you look at the text, he never asked the boy a question about what he was going to do with what he got. If my son came to me and asked me and I, I knew that he wasn't ready to get out there, I'd ask him, what you going to do? What, what is your intention uh, with what you're going to receive? But Jesus never asked the boy what his intention is. He, he never inquires why he needed to separate himself from the family. He never, if you notice, he never, he never asks why you want the money. What are you going to do with the money? What is your plan for the money? What are your plans when you get out there? Where are you going? You know, you know how you'd ask your child if your child came to you and asked you for everything that he had coming to him. He was going to go away. You know, you'd be asking a million questions to find out why and what he was going to be doing. But Jesus, he does this, he tells this parable about this man uh, that he never asks where he's going. Isn't that curious? Isn't, isn't it, isn't it uh, amazing how Jesus tells this parable uh, to refute the grumblings of the Pharisees and the scribes. Uh, but he gives him his portion and the young man goes out into a far country. He goes away from uh, his father. He goes away from his brother. He goes away from the comfort of his own home. He goes away from everything that he knows. He, he wants to strike out on his own. He, he wants to be his own boss. He wants to, to call his own shots. He, he goes out on his own among uh, unknown to handle his own affairs. God Almighty. Look, 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 look at this man. Look, look at this man, this, this young man. He, he's gone out into a far country. Why you have to go so far? Why, why can't you just move around the corner? Why, 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 why can't you just go uh, to the next county uh, so I can keep an eye on you? Uh, amen. Why, 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 when, when you need me, I'm close enough for you to call me. Why, why, why do you have to go to the far for country. The, 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 I just can't understand this young boy why he wanted to go to the far country. Maybe, maybe, maybe he wanted to go to a far country uh, so that uh, he would be far enough from his father uh, 
to uh, be away from any resemblance of uh, his father's customs uh, or practices. Amen. I know when I wanted to go on my own and I wanted to get away from my father and mother's house, I went, I went to another state, a far country, because I, I wanted to be my own man and I didn't want uh, what, what their uh, customs and practices were. I didn't want them hanging over my head. I wanted, I wanted to be my own man and I wanted to do my own own thing and I didn't want anybody to say anything and so I went into a far come on somebody I, 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 I know you're going to get it in a minute I, he, he went into a far country May, may, maybe, maybe, maybe the reason that he went into a far country, maybe the reason that he went into a, a far country because there would be nobody there who knew him, who, who knew he was. And if he wanted to stay up at night, he could stay up at night. If he, if he wanted to run the street, nobody would say, William, what you doing, boy? <laughs> Nobody knew who he was. Yeah, he, he wanted to go into a far country. Do I have a witness? Do you know anybody, amen, around you that has gone into a far country and you worried about them, wondering uh, what they're doing? Anybody here ever had a child that wanted to go into the far country outside of your apron string. Yeah. Want to get away and experience life. Want to get away and see what is coming to him. Lord have mercy. He wanted to go into a far country. And the Bible says in our text, it says that as he got out there, he attached himself uh, because he's inexperienced. He doesn't know people like he thinks he knows. But Brown, he thinks that he has everything in in line, but he's young and immature. He, he's, he's green. Somebody say green. He, he's green, and, and he doesn't know exactly what's out there. He just has the un, des, un, unfailing desire to be on his own. Amen. And when he gets out there, he runs in to folk who are advantage takers let me tell you when you leave home when you get outside of the care of your uh, of those who love you you'll fall into the hands of advantage takers oh uh, when you when you decide that you don't need nobody telling you, you don't need nobody warning you, you don't need nobody looking out for you, you don't need, come on somebody, you, you don't need those things, uh, then you fall into the hands uh, of advantage takers. Yeah, and when he gets out there, he, he, the Bible says that he, he finds, he goes and, and he, uh, he, many days after the young man gathered all that he had and took his journey into the far country and there wasted his substance. My God today. He, he, he got out there and they used him, what they really did. They just got on to him and held on to him and used his goods, used everything that he had, used him for what he had and not who he was. 
my God. And then when it was all gone, nobody would help him. Nobody cared for him. Nobody looked after him like his father. Nobody uh, cared about him developing a bank account and putting his money in the bank account. Nobody cared about him spending his money on riotous living. No, nobody cared. Nobody cared about him. In fact, everybody was uh, encouraging his spendthriftness. Uh, encouraging him to, dis, to, to, to use his money in a way that there was no, uh, no way to recover what he had. I, I wish I had somebody here that has ever run into somebody who was uh, an advantage taker. I wonder, I wonder if you've ever, if you've ever been around uh, some people who were just in it for what they could get out of it. If, I wonder if there's anyone here that ever has been around people who, uh, who live lawlessly. This young, this young lad lived lawlessly. He, he, he was living uh, the time of his life. Uh, but when it was all gone, when he spent all that he had, and, and, and I like the, the, the scripture as it says, when he had spent all. Amen. It, it's not saying, uh, it didn't say when he spent all that he had, but it says when he spent all. Somebody look at somebody and say all, all. He, he spent it all. He, he spent everything. He, he gave of his substance and of his spirit. He gave of his confidence as well as his mind. He gave all. You ever been, you ever been in a situation where you are given all that you got, but the person you're with Ain't given nothing. Have you ever, have you ever, have you ever been in a marriage where you are given everything and your wife or your husband is holding back on theirs? Have you ever, a lot of people have divorced. A lot of people have gone the other way. Amen. Amen. Because they weren't getting everything that they could get out of their spouse. This young boy gave all. And then when it all was gone, nobody gave him anything. You can't depend on the world. When you are in need, you can't depend on the world to come to your rescue when you are in need. You can't depend on the world to offer you a comforting word when you are in need. You can't, you, can't, you can't depend on society to throw you a, a bone when you find yourself in need. The only place that you can find comfort when your soul is troubled is in the house of the Lord. The only place that you can find rest for your weary travels is in the house of the Lord. Somebody ought to help me right there. The only place where you can find a relief when you have been misused is in the house of the Lord. I don't know what you're talking about, but uh, I know when I was weak, 
I came to the house. When I was troubled, I came on in. Come on, somebody. When, when, when things didn't seem like they were going to work out for me, I came to the house of the Lord. Come on, somebody. He said, come all ye weary and a heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke. Come on, somebody. If you need anything, you need to come on to the house. It, it, it baffles me. It baffles me how when we get in trouble and things start going wrong in our lives, uh, the first place we pull away from is uh, the church. Is that right? Yeah, you talk to somebody about coming to the Lord or coming to church and they'll say, well, you know, as soon as I get myself together. Or, or I, and you ask them and they say, as soon as I get this uh, situation straightened out. You know, I got too, I was going to come to church last Sunday, but I got too many things. And I, why do we pull away from God? He's the one we ought to move forward to. He's the one we ought to draw cling, uh, cling to. Somebody ought to say, draw me nearer, oh God, to thee. Huh? Somebody ought to help me right there. He's the one who can satisfy all of your ills. Is that right? He, he's the one that can put a period behind a sentence that has nothing but question marks. This young man, Jesus, explains, explains, explains the parable. Says the young man lost all that he had and nobody would give him anything. And so, as it would happen, he goes to the pig pen. He, 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 he attaches himself to a man that sent him out in the field. Uh, uh, you always find somebody uh, that you can take advantage of. Sends him in the field being a Jew and knowing that Jews would not uh, consider swine to be uh, unholy animals. He, he, he goes and agrees uh, to get out into the hog pen and feed the swine. And the Bible says that he would fain have uh, eaten the same food, the hus that the swine did eat. Good God Almighty. Uh, you'll find yourself in a hog pen of life outside of the will of God. There is no place. And while you're sitting there today, my dears, uh, I need to let you know that uh, if you are trying to operate outside of God's will, every situation outside of his will feels like a hog pen. Amen. Every situation that you find yourself in will fail. Oh, he may give you, he may give you some success. He may give you initial success. But by and large, after a while, you are going to fail. Do I have a witness? I, I wish I had somebody here that could testify and say, yes, preacher, I've been there. I know what you're talking about. I've been outside of God's will and tried it on my own. And the only way, the only reason you're looking at me right now is because I surrendered my will. Come on, somebody. 
to God's will. Is that right? Surrendering God to God's will, it does not mean, it does not mean giving up everything. Uh, it means that you are giving up your will to God. It means that you realize and recognize that the only one who is smart enough to run your life is God. This young man came to, he came to a amazing decision as he was sitting in the hog pen. Uh, and nobody knows how long he was there. <laughs> Amen. But he was there long enough. Amen. He's thinking about his father's house. I want you to listen with me at his personal, private conversation with himself. He says, uh, how many of my father's hired servants have food enough to spare and I perish here in the hog pen. I tell you, it'll make you think when you have hit rock bottom. I wish I had a witness here who can say, Reverend, not long ago, I found myself near rock bottom. And I didn't know which way I was going to turn. Yeah, and I found in that time, I was at a, a crossroad in my life. Lord, I, I didn't know which way, which way I was going to go. Yes, when you get to the point in your life where you have to go through those kind of questionings. The only way that you can look is up. And when you look up and see the Lord and say, God, I need your help in this situation. I want to give you three things that the boy did the first thing he remembered the Christ in him he remembered the Christ in him before you can get out of your situation you must see yourself as better than your situation his, his comeback became his comeback started with him recognizing himself that he's better than the hog pen. And that's what I need to say to somebody today. You're better than your situation. You're better than your drug addiction. You're better than your homosexuality. God made you better. He made you better than your, home, your promiscuity. He made you better. You have to recognize that you are better. He, he recognized he was better than a husband abuser. He was better than a wife beater. He was, he was better than the situation that came up. And so he knew he needed to rise from the hog pen. The second thing, not only did he realize that he was better than his situation, he had, he talked to himself. Amen. How many of you have ever had to talk to yourself? 
How many of you have ever had to sit and had to sit down with yourself? I know I have. I've had to sit down with myself and tell myself, you know, this ain't what God has for you. What are you doing way out here? You need to go on back home and reclaim your destiny. Somebody here needs to reclaim their destiny. Somebody needs to reclaim what they were designed for. Somebody here needs to reclaim your future. Look at somebody and say, you can reclaim your future. You, you, you can reclaim your future. Yeah, he talked to himself. Have a talk with yourself. Look at your neighbor and say, talk to yourself. Don't need nobody talking with you or about you. You don't need to talk with nobody else or about nobody else. Talk with yourself. Speak to yourself. Get yourself in line. And then God will make a difference in your life. Do I have a witness? And then finally, not only did he talk to himself, not only did he realize that he was better than his situation, but he humbled himself before God. Look at him and he says, I will go back to my father. And I will say, Father, I've sinned against you. Oh, Father, please forgive me for what I've done. I've been a bad example of your house. Please forgive me of everything that I did. Can you see him say, Father, oh, Father, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. I'm no worthy, no longer worthy to be associated with your name. And that's a bad thing when you get to the point where you feel like you're no longer worthy to be associated with God's name. You made a mockery of God's name. You've crucified a Christ afresh in your life. But oh, this young boy, he gets up out of the hog pen. He humbles himself, goes to his father, and his father sees him afar off, gets up off the porch, runs to the young boy, and hugs the young boy's neck, falls on his neck, kisses the young boy, doesn't give him a chance to say what he wants to say and says, I'm just glad that you're home. Isn't that wonderful? Aren't you glad that we serve a God who's just glad when you come home? The, the shepherd who wanted the sheep, who went after the one, was glad when he found the one, celebrated with his friends. I found my sheep. The woman who had 10 pieces of silver, when she lost them, she searched far and wide. But when she found her coins, she called all of her friends, come celebrate with me because my coins have been recovered. Ah, somebody ought to help me. But then when the boy came home and his father saw him, his father hugged his neck because his father said, my son who was lost has now been found. Who was dead is now alive. Somebody ought to know 
God is only interested in finding you and setting you free. Somebody who's been captive all your life. God wants to set you free. He wants to knock you into a reality that'll save your soul. Somebody ought to say yes. Ain't God good, y'all? I say, ain't he good, y'all? Won't he wash away your sins? Won't he turn all of your sorrows into joy? Won't he take your hand when nobody would take your hand and tell you you're his friend? He's your friend. Ain't he all right? I say, ain't God all right? Say yes. Say yes. This man said, go get a robe and put it on his back. Go get slippers and put it on his feet. Go get a ring and put it on his finger. He's now back in the family. He's a part of the family. He has all rights and privileges of the family. Are you a part of the family? Has God welcomed you into his house, into his family? If you haven't, let me tell you why you ought to be in his family. Because he sent his son to die on a Calvary's hill. He died. Yes, he died. They swung him high and struck him. And they stopped him low. Let me tell you, for me, he died. He died early Sunday morning. He died, but early Sunday morning. He got out the grave with all. All. All power. All power. All power in his hand. Ain't he all right? I say, ain't God all right? Did he save your soul? You ought to stand on your feet if God saved your soul and say, yes, he saved my soul. Be a witness for the king. Who will be a witness? Ain't he all right? I say, ain't he all right? Do you love him today? Ain't he all right? Ain't God all right? Say yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. If you, if you listen to me, if you find yourself at a crossroad, the crossroad is going to be the world or God. Both are unknown. God comes with many promises that are available to many people, to everybody who believes. The only thing that you have to do is believe. The only thing that you have to do is accept his saviorship. Believe that he died and he rose from the dead and is no longer, no longer dead. Then you can be saved and salvation is akin to making that that turn to the right at that crossroad and you may already be saved you already may know the lord you may say preacher i'm already saved i know the lord 
Well, if that's so, I praise his name. But all of us go through trials, go through struggles, go through circumstances that render us helpless. And if you, if you, if you, if you hear the voice of God calling, don't, don't go away from his voice. Don't be like Carol Ann and go away from the light. Come to the light. Jesus is the light of the world. And he's waiting. He wants to reestablish your life. He wants to set you on course to reach your goal. And you know what your goal was. You know, you know what God told you. You know what promises he made to you. You know what your agreement was with him. And he's saying right now, our agreement still stands. It hasn't changed. All I need for you to do is to keep up your end of the agreement. So who's going to enter into covenant with God today? Who's going, who's going, who's going? Who's going to say, yes, I've got to become victorious over this thing oh, in my life. Mess. I've, got to, I've, I've got to become victorious in my life. Too many things are, are getting the victory over me. And I'm, I'm, I'm not being victorious. I'm not, I'm not being the church. I'm not, I, I've let God down. And I, I want to I, I wanna pick God up. He's been blessing me. He's been blessing my life. But I'm not doing anything for him. I, I need to get on the stick. Is there anybody here that feels like that today? I see you. Anybody feel like, Lord, I come to church. Maybe I come to Bible study. Maybe I come to Sunday school. And that's it. But there's so much more. In fact, the one thing that God asks us to do, we don't do. And he said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then teach them, teach them to observe whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always. That's, that's, that's his part of the agreement. I'm with you always. Until the end of the earth. And that, that, that's a good reason for me to hold up my end of the bargain. So I want to invite you today to come and make your intention known to God. Lord, I know that I haven't done everything that like you want it done. But right now, those things that I can change, those things that I can be victorious over, those things that I can stop doing, I'm going to commit my life to making that change. And if there's one who is here with me, I invite you to come and make a change. Make a change. 
God is waiting. He wants to use you. He wants to do in you what you can't do for yourself. Hallelujah. Bless you, brother. Bless you. Somebody else? Oh, I'm so serious. We've been coming to church for years. Been coming to church for years. The challenge is to now be an overcomer over that which is overcoming you. Hallelujah. And you know, I don't have to point out different things. You know what it is in your life. The challenge is, are you going to be an overcomer? The Bible, Jesus said in Revelation, to him that overcome, I will give to him to sit at my right hand. I will give to him a stone, a white stone. And on that stone will be written a name that the angels do not know. Only you and my father. Won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come? Is there another? Hallelujah. That's fed up with themselves. Hallelujah. Somebody might want to be born again. Can't assume that everybody knows who the Lord is. Well, the opportunity is now. Come and take a dip in this healing water. Hallelujah. God bless you. I'm living for the promise. I'm living for the promise. I'm living. Bless the name of Jesus Christ. The joy of the soul of the church explodes when one come. We are blessed today to have the fruit at the harvest time. Pastor Turner and the church family, we have Jimmy Lewis coming uh, to re rededicate his life back to Christ. Praise God. Praise God, Brother Jimmy. It's just good to see you come. And a male, a man, this great leadership awaits you in the body of Christ. We want to welcome you to the rededication, the recommitment of your life to him. We praise God for your presence. And to go with the counselor. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. The Christ. I say bless his name. For his name alone is worthy. And then let's bless, bless the effort. The message and the man brother victor lewis give god a praise amen great message message that challenges all of us because i'm certain that some parts of the message we could see ourselves in reflection of that young prodigal Son, there have been some prodigal daughters. Praise God. That we are blessed today. The officers are coming now as we worship the Lord, his tithes and our offerings. 
as we worship the Lord with his tithes and our offerings. Please. God be praised, God be praised, God be praised, God be praised. Praise the name of Jesus the Christ. the Lord, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Listen, listen. Uh, this is a time in which we we, we cling together. Uh, we've been here before and we are here again. Right now we are, we are, we're in high waters. Waters coming up uh, almost above our heads. We gotta jump up to breathe. But I'm trusting in your commitment and your love for the church that you will uh, accept my request uh, to be a face fruit. It's a campaign for an extra commitment that you make to the Lord. And uh, I'm blessed to have our musicians still with us another month and hopefully within that month's time we would have come to a increased uh, first pledge givers um, rehearsal will be Wednesday night throughout this month Minister of Music has put together or is putting together a uh, musical on the third Sunday at 3.30. Uh, other churches have been invited, but you must come to rehearsal each week, and as often as he calls for you to come, that you can be ready. 
Amen. Friendship is having their musical, I think, next week, and we are participating with them. So we need you to come participate in your choirs uh, this week at 7.30, and each week, and only two weeks before the third Sunday, so you got to work hard, but you can do it. I know you, you can, you're a fast runner. You can catch on quickly. So let us, let us participate, invite others to come. Amen. And now uh, the Lord's Supper is tonight, tonight at 6 o'clock. And uh, only two reasons why you won't come tonight, and that is the Super Bowl and rain. But if your God is come second and third behind those two nature things and human activities, then I please stay home. But otherwise, see you tonight. Uh, and with the Super Bowl, you can watch it. It will be replayed for the next couple of weeks. And the rain will stop. But the Lord's work will continue. And now, our, our preachers who preaches that first sermon after joining the church, we raise an offering for them. And today, we want a good offering for Brother Lewis as he has delivered unto us a soul-stirring and extensive message. He preached an hour, so we want to give him an hour of love. Amen. As you, will you come at will, and then we will receive the benediction. Amen. Everybody who will, everybody whom the Lord has blessed with an offering, uh, will you come and put it in this tray? Thank you, baby. And they shall be led by a child. Amen, amen, amen. God is good. Thank you, Dr. Merrill. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. But Linwood, he's here dodging the freezing in Minnesota. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. When you bless the man of God, he will bless you. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Free will given. Cause God's blessings to be upon you permanently. Amen, amen. we stand to depart for, until 6 o'clock today and I ask as you come together as you come together um, our baby that we prayed for last Sunday is in the house amen and she looks well she looks healed so we thank God for answered prayer. Pastor Dallas is home. I visited with him yesterday, and um, he is doing much better. He is doing much better. He says to thank God for your prayers and for your concern. Amen. And we keep Brother uh, McGee and his wife lifted up in prayer and keep my wife lifted up in prayer and my oldest sister-in-law is out of intensive care and she is doing greatly improving of her health situation 
God is a good God, and the names are too, too many to read them here, but you've got the, you've got the program with their names listed. Please pray for your brother and your sister, and most of all, pray for the pastor. I need your prayers. Come, come at us, come together. When I ask Brother Walt to lead us in our closing prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy holy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning. And please give us your grace and your mercy all day long. We thank you, Father, for reasonable good health. Thank you, Father, as we praise your holy name. And then, Father, we ask you to look upon our church this morning, Father. Please, sir, Father, bless it to prosper and bless it to come together. Bless our pastor, Father, and his family. Please, sir, bless him, Father, and keep him under your wings. Bless all of the children of New Revelation this morning, Father. Bless us, please, sir. We need all the blessing we can get. Thank you, Father, for all that you've done in the past for us, Father. Thank you for what you're doing right now. And we pray that you will do for us in the future. Please, Father, cover us with your blood. We know that you can do it because you're God and only God. No one above you, Father. You are the Father that we love and we obey and we respect. You are the reason we're here today, Father, because we believe in you. We believe that you can do all things, Father, all things, and we know that you will never let us down. Sometimes, Father, when we think that you're not listening to us, but you are, and we know you are. So, Father, please look up on us. Please guide us, Father, in our life. Guide us, Father, please, sir. We need your blessings, and we need it right now, because times right now are not very good. We've got crime everywhere, and we got a president don't seem to be listening to the people. So please, sir, look up on us, Father. Never let us down. Please cover us with your blood, Father. And Father, please, right now, right now, bless us. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. As you leave, shake hands with the preacher and your friends whom you haven't greeted today.